President. Senator from Ohio. I thank the uh, Senate Majority Leader. I, I rise in opposition understanding the vote has been taken, but wanting to speak about the record of Governor Terry Branstad and his nomination to be ambassador to the People's Republic of China. It's a critical diplomatic post today more than perhaps any time in our history, certainly increasingly important through every administration as China's um, expansionist views of the world grow, as China's economy becomes more and more dominant in East Asia, as China has, um, by not playing fair on, on economic issues, um, has uh, caused with the acquiescence of many, 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 many American companies, far too many jobs to move there. We, we've seen, um, Mr. President, uh, uh, sort of a new business model for American business that's been around now for a quarter century, something that economic history never showed us before, where companies shut down in places like Willowick or Toledo or Dayton or Springfield, Ohio, move overseas getting tax, tax breaks to do it, uh, build plants there and sell those products back into Ohio or into Oklahoma or into the United States over in the other 48 states. Uh, unfortunately, China has been, has been part of that. Um, while U.S. companies have acted in many cases irresponsibly, uh, China has played into it. We have serious issues with China. From their currency manipulation to trade cheating that hurts American steel industry to their dismal record, dismal documented record on human rights and religious freedom. On all these fronts, we need to take a firm line with, to, to take a firm p p uh, position with China. We need an ambassador who will advocate for American workers, for American businesses, and yes, for American values. I don't believe Governor Branstad will be that ambassador. When it comes to putting American workers first, Governor Branstad's record, frankly, is appalling. How can he advocate for America's workers and, ex and for expanding the rights of working people around the world when he fought against them at home in his home state of Iowa? His governor, Terry Branstad, waged war on collective bargaining rights. He recently signed legislation that takes away the right of public employees to bargain for fair wages and for health care rights they'd been guaranteed for 45 years, rights that were enshrined by a law signed by a former Republican governor. When the State Department measures labor rights in countries around the world, they look at whether a country's laws allow workers to organize and engage in collective bargaining. China's results have always been poor. They've been criticized for deplorable working conditions. How can our country, how can the United States lead by example when it comes to ensuring that hard work pays off when the man representing us in Beijing, when the man representing us at the negotiating table has taken away workers' rights in our own country? Don't think for a moment that the Chinese will not, will not remind the American ambassador of what he's done on worker rights in his home state as we perhaps argue Unclear we will now, but perhaps argue for expanding worker rights in China. I appreciated the questions for the record that Senator Cardin submitted to Governor Branstad. Unfortunately, his answers were vague. He did nothing to address the serious concerns that so many of us have. The President made a lot of campaign promises when it comes to standing up to China. I've been clear since the days after the election when I called the President-elect's transition team and in conversations with President Trump and with U.S. Trade Rep Ambassador Lighthizer that I want to work with them on that, with the President, with, uh, with the U.S. Trade Rep. But after his, meeting with China, after his meeting with Chinese President Xi, I sent a letter to President Trump outlining steps he should take to fighting for American workers, particularly in the steel industry, in his 100-day plan on trade. But the person negotiating the 100-day plan needs to have America's workers' interests first in their mind. Governor Branstad's made it clear that multinational corporations, not ordinary American workers, not people in Youngstown and Warren and Steubenville and, and Columbus, makes it clear that multinational corporations, not workers, will have his ear. And on all these trade agreements, you can see corporate fingerprints on these trade agreements. Rarely do you see workers at the table advocating for worker rights. You only see trade policy that reflects the interests of large corporations. Those corporations that then use these trade policies to outsource jobs around the world. 
It's not just worker rights where China falls wealthily short and where we need to take a tough stand. China's record on human rights and religious freedom is unacceptable. Our ambassador needs to make that clear. When U.S. officials represent us to the world, they must not only be advocates for our business interests, they should be that, to be sure. They must also be credible advocates on behalf of workers and on behalf of our nation's values. Values like freedom, freedom of speech and freedom to organize and the freedom to challenge powerful special interests. These are values that go to the core of who we are as, Amer as the American people. But again, Governor Branstad is not led by example. He's waged war on women's access to health care. Just this week, Planned Parenthood announced it'll be forced to shut down four Iowa health clinics because of a law signed by Governor Branstad, which blocked its funding. These clinics serve 15,000 patients over the past three years, not, not providing abortions, Great, great, great majority of these 15,000 patients got primary care, got preventive care, got contraceptive coverage, all the things that women in every community in this country demand. Many live in rural areas. Many have nowhere else to turn for basic care. Now, where will these women go for cancer screenings? Where will they go for diabetes screenings? Whether, where will they go for other preventive care? Yet, Governor Branstad has signed legislation taking it away, forcing the shutdown of these clinics. Access to health care is a basic right. In this country, it should be in all 50 states. We need to take care of American patients and American workers and set an example for the world. Our diplomats must be that example. But instead, we now have a man at the negotiating table who again and again and again has proven he wants to turn back the clock on health care and on workers' rights. We need an ambassador with a record of championing American values, only then can be, we be confident that he will stand up to China and put Ohio workers and American workers first. Frankly, Mr. President, I question Governor Branstad's ability to be that ambassador to represent the people of this great country and the People's Republic of China.